everyone, and welcome back to Seduce Me. The last time we got started on Sam's Root. And we got to see the inside of his mouth. So, yeah. Anyway, we're going to continue with the story today, so let's get started. Sam walked over to me and placed a hand on my shoulder, looking at me with concern. If she comes after you, you need to tell us, okay? Okay, okay. I nodded, knowing that he, that he wanted to protect me. Sam gently took his hand from my shoulder and very gently moved a strand of hair from my face, however, making me blush and forget what I was thinking about. The sound of collective chuckles and playful snickers whispered through the air, making me blush even more. As Sam grunted in reply, the laughter stopped. I looked up to see he was glaring at his brothers, a fist forming in his hand, ready to swing at one of them. No, Sam, we don't need any fighting right now. He and I pulled away from each other just as the sound of Naomi's car appeared. I quickly ate my food, waved to the boys, and left, confident that nothing was going to happen. And it did. S sam Suddenly, Diane had stopped in her tracks. Sam, who is... It then dawned on her. Ah. Uh... One of the boys. Why don't you tell me which boy is Sam? I felt myself non compliance. The, the third. Diana giggled in reply before letting go of my face and stepping back. Really? The brute? With you? Mm hmm. I nodded once again, but this time it was partly my own decision to reply. Diana let out a sound that mimicked a cat's purr before stepping away from me. Alright then. Well, if it's the brute you're infatuated with, you should really rethink your romantic options. Don't tell me who I can't and can't- <laughs> Don't tell me who I can and can't like! Diana chuckled before kissing my nose, where I felt a shot of energy zap out of my body, almost making me dizzy and recoil. Diana then turned to the desk and sat on the wood, crossing her legs. You can go now. Remember, no class for the rest of the week. Beside me, sitting in a chair beside the bed, was Sam, rousing himself up to see me awake. I smiled at him, seeing his slightly ruffled hair and tired eyes. Oh, you're awake. How do you feel? Eh. Eh. Sam nodded before he looked up at the bed, leaning over to stare at the a blanket. I'm such an idiot. If I was stronger... You wouldn't be like this. Sam, it's not your fault! No, it's my fault. It's our fault. Look at you. You're in bed, again. After us using our powers, again. And you're a target, again, because of us! <sighs> we never should have come. Sam, it's not your fault. Just... I quickly reached over and put my finger on his lips, stopping him from going any further. I didn't want to hear anymore. Sam, it's okay. I wanted to help you out. I offered to let you all stay. Nothing is your fault. I gently moved my hand and cupped Sam's cheek, staring at him with concern. I didn't want him to hold guilt in his mind about this whole ordeal. Diana was desperate and she'd hunt anyone for them. It wasn't his fault she was desperate enough to try to hunt them down. Sam looked at me, defeated by my hand and before he closed his eyes and let her sigh. However, I grew curious. So, Sam, you're a noble? Sam opened his eyes to look at me. He didn't seem angry, but he had a coldness in his voice as he spoke. I was a noble. I'm not a noble anymore. Not anymore? I was the third son of the Demon Lord. My brothers and I lived together in the castle as nobility, but since James was the oldest, James became royalty and was heir to the throne. The whole situation became one gigantic, boring mess. So we all grouped together and left to come here. Once that happened, we surely lost the chance to ever get forgiveness. What was it like while you were there? Like I said, one gigantic, boring mess. Eric, Matthew, and I were as replacements in case James fucked up. Since Eric was before me and since my dad was a dickbag... No kidding! I wasn't ever likely to get the throne. So, I spent my days lazing about and not giving two shits about anything. Not even my mom could control me. Your mom? Yeah, 
She's not like my asshole of a dad. She was actually caring and kind, but was a pushover. Sam and I are small laugh. I could tell he was getting nostalgic. She always thought I could be more than I was, but my dad definitely made sure I knew my place. In response, I became the rebel's son, hanging out with the commoner demons and such just to piss my dad off. I swear, I'm surprised he didn't kill me out of shame. That's horrible! Sam stared at me as if I had slapped him. He then sighed and ruffled my hair, ruffled my hair a bit. Don't even worry about it. You need rest. You don't need to know about the demon world. But I want to know more about you. Sam stared at me once again as if I had slapped him. I couldn't tell whether I was sticking him off or intriguing him. He let his hand that was ruffling my hair or fall down, fall down the strip into my hair, stopping at my cheek to curl it. For a strong man, Sam knew how to be soft. <sighs> Sam lay aside before unlinking his dog tag from his neck and putting it around mine. I'm warning you, my past is boring. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be boring. Sam wrapped his fingers gingerly around the dog tag and I watched his green mist begin to to surround his hand and the dog tag. The green aura wrapped around the necklace until it shaked around my head around my head, and before I knew it, I was surrounded in green light. When the light had subsided, I was back in the main hall of the demon castle. I looked around, being unable to feeling unable to move, but I could practically see everything as clear as I had before. Bring that back! Oh dear. My head shot on towards a sudden exclamation where I saw Sam rush into the hall with, with quite a large basket of bread. No chance in hell, Creepo! Sam then did what I only ever saw in TV shows or movies. He stomped his foot onto the ground, causing a large boulder to burst out from it before he kicked it towards the entrance he had come from. I can only stare as the boulder DIDN'T demolish the door it was flying towards, but simply skated to a stop, blocking the entrance. <laughs> that was easy. Sam then turned into the hall, looking around as he walked towards the throne. He took a small roll of bread and stuffed it into his mouth, only able to co cover half of it as he stared at the seat. I was surprised. Why did Sam steal bread? Why would he steal bread? Why hey, would he still steal bread? He was a rebel, yes, but he was a noble. He wouldn't get in trouble for taking food, but he had a basket of bread. Sam chewed and swallowed the bread he he'd started consuming inside. Fucking asshole piece of shit parrot. At least you have your folks. Oh, hello. I turned to see he, another demon step out from behind the pillar towards Sam. Sam smirked at him and tossed him the back, basket of bread. Think that's enough for you and your brother? Oh, more than enough. This means a lot, man. Don't mention it, Gaku. So he got the... So he got the bread for that guy. Huh. Gaku smiled and held out a hand to Sam, who took it and shook it. We owe you for this. You don't owe me jack shit. Now get going before you get caught. Gaku, who nodded. However, Gaku quickly got out a dog tag from his trench coat and held it out for Sam. Sam steered before reaching out and taking it. What is this? A gift. A human world trinket. I know you and your brothers have been interested in it. Maybe this might bring you closer to it. Huh. Sam stared before looking down at the gift. It was a glimmering s over almost entrancing Sam's gaze. As Sam looked back up, Gaku who lifted off of the ground and flew out an open window into the uh, almost sickly purple sky. The human world. Sam looked back at the train and get before wrapping it with green magic. Like I can get any closer. Sam tossed the trinket into the air, letting it vanish into an unknown oblivion. I smiled a bit at the sight, knowing the future of that point. Hmm, little did he know that he was going to be going into the human world sometime in the future. <laughs> what surprised me was a green herb slowly flowing towards Sam, wrapped it in a purple-like aura. Sam didn't even turn around, but spoke as if he knew. What do you want, Mom? Mom? How is that orb his mother? The orb simply floated in place as Sam turned to it with an almost angry glare. Yes, I stole that bread and gave it to the commoner, all right? Don't judge me. Once again, Sam was not responded to, at least not from what I heard. Sam flicked his teeth and crossed his arms, peeved. Yeah, yeah, whatever. 
The orb then flo flew over to Sam and lightly brushed his cheek before flying off, disappearing into the air. Sam sighed, rolling his shoulders. I need to get out of here. He looked like he had a lot on his mind, but his closed mouth wouldn't let him express it. However, none could question his irritation. Eventually, Sam stopped the magic, taking the dog tag off of me and holding it in his hands before looking to me. What did I tell you? Boring. NOT BORING! You helped that demon get food. I was a rebel breaking rules. We're not supposed to care for common demons. We're supposed to let them die out if they don't have the ability to take care of themselves. Sam gritted his teeth and let out an aggravated sigh. Whatever. I'm not there anymore. I'm here. Sam! Look, I'm sorry. I stared, my mind going blank. What was he apologizing for? Sam stared down at the blankets again. You've done a lot for me and my brothers. Sheltering us, letting us continue to live here. It may not seem like much, but for us, it means everything. Especially after everything that's happened to you with that Hellspawn Malik and Diana being crazy. I don't think we'll ever be able to repay you for what you've done. I watched in speechless silence as Sam lifted his head, his eyes full of almost hopelessness. Thank you. Sam lowered his head and gently, almost as if I was fragile, placed his hand over my head. Placed his hand over my hand. I couldn't help but feel my heart squeeze within my chest at the sight. He truly cared. Sam let out a small sigh before looking to me, re removing his hand from mine. Now get some sleep. You still need rest. We'll wake you up when dinner is done. Sam gently pressed me back down onto the bed, resolved in what had happened. I'm gonna do the smooches! I couldn't let him leave without doing something. I quickly pulled Sam down to me, lifted, his, lifted my head, and gently kissed him, softly laying a hand on his cheek to keep his face close. Sam stared in deep surprise. That's... I'm pretty sure that's outright shock right there. But anyway... Sam stared in deep surprise before hesitantly kissing me back, caressing my cheek, and slightly mel melting at the touch of our lips. A soft sigh escaped his lips before he slowly pull pulled away with a smile. He gently licked his lips, making me go right in the face at the simple gesture. He let out a satisfied sigh before running a hand through my hair. Sleep, doofus. Well, good night to you, too! And with that, he stood up and left the room, leaving me to rest as per his request. I smiled to myself for relaxing into the mattress. <laughs> well, that didn't last long. I suddenly tensed up. I felt majorly uneasy. Something wasn't right. I felt it in my core. She must be here. The thought of her in the house infuriated me beyond belief. I had to make sure she was not here. I rolled out of bed and quickly left my room, wandering the halls and listening closely. She was a, de she was a demon, but I was listening very, very intently. There was no way she would have been able to sneak up on me. I know you're here. Where are you? I could feel myself growl. It wasn't a matter of fear that, that she'd take away the boys anymore. Her very existence had lit a fire of rage within my gut, which only grew as each day went by. This feud was getting on my nerves, and I knew it, can, it would not end well for, for one of us. I wasn't going to lose to that demon witch! What the fuck do you want? My heart stopped. Diana was with Sam. My mind flew into slow motion, playing fake images of Diana trying to seduce Sam in my head to further, fa to further fan the angry flame inside of me. I instinctively followed Sam's voice. I was approaching in the grand lobby. I hid myself behind in the corner of the hall, peeking into the space and down at the scene. I peeked inside to see Sam by the foot of the stairs with Diana sitting on the railing looking to, see, looking to him. My, my, such a brute. Didn't your mother teach you how to treat a woman? She isn't here, and frankly, you shouldn't be either. Ah, I'm hurt. Wounded, truly. Well? <laughs> like I care, you crazy bitch. Pity. And here I thought I was going to offer you the chance to become something better than just a simple incubus. What was Diana going on about? More than just an incubus? She was insane! Like you got anything I care about. How about becoming the next demon lord? Ooh. I froze. What'd she mean? Becoming the next demon lord? The boys weren't in the demon world anymore. They had no claim to the throne anymore. 
Sam stared at Diana, which made me worried. You're bluffing. Well, currently, I'm the contracted bride to the heir to the throne. Since the throne is open, it's available to any son of the Demon Lord's line. Think about it. You'll gain the throne, the land, and a bride to continue your lineage with. Doesn't that sound like a perfect life for an incubus like you? I can feel myself gripping my fists tightly in anger. How dare this girl try to convince Sam to return to the demon world? He ran away from it. He didn't ha have to go back. He shouldn't go back. My mind began to wander, imagining him saying yes. He would leave and the boy and the brothers would, sure would follow to bring him back. They'd be trapped because Diana would make sure they could never leave. Sam would be the new demon lord with Diana as his queen, and I'd lose him. You must be crazier than I thought. Luckily, that's not oh, what Sam's thinking. What? I felt surprise run down my body again. Did I hear Sam correctly? He denied her? You dare deny. Whoa! All of a sudden, Sam's body disappeared as well as Diana's. I blinked and saw Diana's... I blinked and saw Sam grip Diana by the neck, hanging her body to the wall near the dining room archway. Her feet couldn't even touch the floor, and I felt myself unconsciously rub my neck at the sight. For once in your life, shut your fucking mouth! I could see Sam's muscles tense and flex at holding Diana, wanting to tense even harder to snap her neck. You do not scare me. I could bring you to your knees and make you beg to return with me on a chain leash. Then do it! I want to see you try to chain me! Sam glared as Diana stared, almost in fear of him. I expected her to actually do it. However, after a small breath of a moment, Sam smirked. <laughs> Called it. Sam then released Diana, laying her body fall to the floor. Diana gripped her neck, coughing for air as Sam stepped back, glaring at her. You're out of power. You've been running without recharging, and now you're on your last life. Shut up! Diana glared and stood up, flipping her hair back to its almost unnaturally sexy style. What's stopping me from taking your little human's energy? You go anywhere near her again, and I will rip you apart. <laughs> the human girl? You must be joking. A human like her can't possibly provide you what you need. She is a human. You're a demon. And who cares? I felt the urge to storm in and shut her mouth. It would give away my position. It would give away my position, but I was growing extremely tired of Diana. I oh, know. I am going to barge right in and stick that woman straight. I decided to be assertive and quickly stepped into the room, rushing down the steps to be in front of Sam. Diana and Sam looked at me in surprise as I glared daggers at Diana. Get out! Well, well, little human. You're awfully nosy in business that doesn't concern you. It does concern me. Does it? I don't think a human would understand the importance of this affair. You're asking him to leave to be with someone he doesn't want to be. <laughs> to be someone he doesn't want to be. That's not going to happen. Oh? And what makes you so sure about that? Well, obviously he doesn't like you, but I love him. Diana stared in shock at my exclamation. Was it not what she expected? I didn't care what she expected. I wasn't going to lose the man I had grown to love. You love him? Yes, I love him. Diana's lips twitched. The edges curled into an amused smirk as she stared at me. So what? A human's love isn't enough to understand the situation. A demon can never reciprocate human feeling. Oh, really? To both of our surprise, however, Sam stepped forward and put an arm around me, pulling me close to his body. I love her. I saw the confidence Diana had shattered in her eyes as she stared at Sam at his words. I could see the struggle in her face to try and find some weakness in Sam, in me, in anything. A demon love a human? Impossible. Are you deaf? I said I love her. You don't have the brains to understand what love is. It's not just a human emotion. Demons like us can feel it too. You just have your head so far up your ass that you refuse to see it. Just like how you refuse to see that you've lost. Diana took a step back physically feeling the sting of Sam's words in her chest. She had lost. 
I could see it in her eyes. Diana's eyes grew dull as she glared at me and Sam. It almost seemed it seemed almost uncharacteristic of her, yet it was something I wasn't surprised to see come from her face. Very well. Fine. Vale. Goodbye. And with that, Diana fit headed into the ground into a purple pentagram, crossing her arms and almost looking upset. Sam and I were then left alone, left with the silence of the room. I finally let out the air I was unconsciously holding in my chest, relaxing from the ordeal. Sam stepped to me and held me gently, surprising me. You alright? I'm okay, I'm okay. I nodded in response, unable to speak so immediately after being surprised. Sam let out a sigh, relaxing in the embrace. I gently placed my hands around him, returning the embrace slightly. I could hear Sam's heartbeat. He held me close in his arms, and I felt safe beyond words. Thank you for defending me. There's no way I'd let her hurt the one I love. I looked at Sam, surprised at what he had said. Sam blushed, moving a strand of my hair from my face to look down at me. I'm an asshole, yeah. Do I deserve to like you? No. I don't deserve to be holding you now. But you... I just... I love you, okay? I love you. I stared wide-eyed, blushing like a maniac. Was this real? No way! This couldn't be real! Was Sam confessing to me? Confessing his love for me? Sam gently caressed my cheek, staring into my eyes with a loving, almost hopeful expression. The warmth of his hand invited me to nestle into it, and I closed my eyes. This wasn't a dream. My heart was pounding to the point where I was sure Sam could hear it. Sam gently leaned in, closing his eyes. He stopped, however, remaining just a mere torturous inch away from my lips. He wanted me to to show my feelings for him. I left myself... He had left himself open, open for me to kiss him or leave him empty. The power I had was unbelievable. Well, of course I'm going to do the smooches! I loved him and wanted to give him exactly what he wanted. I gently leaned in, letting my lips finally touch his gingerly. Gingerly. Sam let out an almost surprised gasp against my lips before wrapping both of his arms around my waist, pulling me close to him. I moved my arms up and around his neck, feeling the kiss between us deepen into a heated height. My chest was pounding, making me feel and see fireworks in my mind. Sam was everything I desired. He was the man I wanted, demon or not. Not ah, crap. It was also supernatural to fall in love with someone so quickly. Maybe it was the sense magic I was thrown into. Maybe it was Cupid playing with my heart. Either way, I found myself melting at the thought of him being with me. I found myself combing my fingers through Sam's hair, making the man holding me to softly tremble at my touch. He gently nibbled on my lower lip, asking me to deepen the kiss between us even further. I easily teased him before her opening, opening my mouth slightly for him. His tongue gently danced with mine as one of his hands slid up my back and cradled my head. He gently leaned my body back, making me cling to him as the heat of our kiss for it was higher and higher. Gently, though, Sam slowed the kiss down and pulled away, staring down at me. His eyes burned for me, wanting me to melt, melt and buckle in his arms. I could feel myself melt already. Sam opened his mouth to speak, but as a very small blush ran, ran along his cheeks, he was reduced to shy silence. As soon as he tried to find the words to say in my eyes, I knew exactly what he wanted. He didn't need energy, though, right? Are you... No, I just... I stared wide-eyed, feeling a blush on my cheeks grow. He didn't say anything more, but I knew what words would have followed if he continued. He wanted me. I was stunned. Was I that appealing to him? Was his passion really that deep for me? Sam gently nuzzled my forehead, losing the blush and finally being able to speak. If you don't want to, we don't have to. I mean, it's up to you. I can feel my mind go numb and purr at the idea. A moment with an incubus. He was a demon of sex, the purest form of lust and desire. My world would rock and I would enjoy every second of it. At the same time, I was indeed inexperienced. Diana wasn't wrong when she claimed me to be innocent. Did I want to give that innocence to him, especially this early? I found myself forgetting the words yes and no. What could I say to him? I knew that in what I wanted, what I wanted but how to say it without bre breaking the moment. Sorry, but we're going to- we're still going to go down the path of just holding. 
I wasn't ready, but I still wanted to give him the love he wanted. Holding me close was all I needed, all I wanted. Part of me grew fearful of what Sam would think. Would he hate me? Would he regret giving me his love? So many stories ended when sex wasn't given, and I didn't want the story to end. Sam, however, smiled and caressed my cheek happily in response, nodding in, in understanding. I could tell he was okay with my decision, which made, me, which made my heart flutter in joy. Sam gently leaned in and kissed my lips once again, wanting both of us to cool down from our passionate high. I kissed back sweetly, feeling the heat in my chest die out peacefully. Sam pulled away slowly, looking into my eyes to reveal deep love that haunted his green irises. Alright, let's get you back to bed. Okay. Sam then wrapped an arm around my shoulders and lowered his other arm underneath my knees. I easily held onto him as he lifted me like a lifted me up like a blushing bride and carried me out of the room towards my room. Sam was kind enough to know my limits, and I trusted him to respect my choice. He wouldn't enthrall me to go against my wishes, nor would he force himself on me. He was perfect! Sam gently lowered me to my bed before paying my head with a loving smile. I was beaming in happiness. I didn't want it to end. As Sam turned to leave, I quickly grabbed his arm. Wait! Sam froze and looked back at me, owing my next command. He was going to obey no matter what I said, but he was anticipating what I was going to ask. I could see it in his eyes. However, I just wanted him to be with me a little longer. I didn't want to rest alone. Hold me. I repeated my words, holding another meaning to those two words. Was he okay with what I wanted? It was so close to what he had asked for, but it wasn't going beyond what I desired. Sam took my words and smile and took in my words and smiled, gnawing before turning back to me and sling sliding into bed with me. I was surprised, but I happily melted into Sam's arms as they wrapped themselves around my body. I rested my head against Sam's chest, enjoying the warmth it provided as I closed my eyes. He truly loved me as I loved him. My rest with him was as peaceful as it could be, the best sleep I had in days. When I opened my eyes, I felt Sam still holding me, but he had fallen asleep. He, his sleeping face made me giggle softly, but the reality of the situation made my heart flutter. I couldn't believe it. I was lying next to a man I had grown to love with all my heart. His warm embrace made me feel safe, and as the tender moment we just shared replayed in my head, I couldn't help but smile and snuggle into his chest further. Unconsciously, he held me tighter to his body, giving me more of his warmth. I didn't want to move, but then my core suddenly tightened and made me sit up without, without waking the man in next to me. I felt my legs move and bring me to my a balcony window where I opened the glass and stepped out onto the patio where Diana was waiting. But we're just going to skip that. One afternoon, a good couple of years after the boys and I had met, I had a moment to myself so I wandered the house and took in all that had happened as if it was all a dream. The demons, the devils, the magic, it all was surreal to believe. It almost frightened me to think it that it could all have been a dream. But the warm feeling in my heart reminded me that it was all real. The demons, the magic, the love I had, all real. I smiled as I held my hands to my chest, relishing in the feelings dancing within my soul. I let out a happy sigh before we were looking up and seeing where I had wandered to. I realized that I was standing in the hallway near my bedroom. I guess I didn't wander far. Jeez, how the hell did I end up here? I stopped at the sound of Sam's voice. It sounded distant, yet he was clear as day. I looked around to he land my sights on an open window. He must have been on the roof again. I tiptoed and I tiptoed over and listened further, wanting to know what he meant. It's been years and I still can't believe I'm here. <laughs> to think I wanted to leave in the first place. I'm such an idiot. I smiled. I quickly remembered when we when we had first met. He was my first kiss, after all. Although it was against my will, it was still my first kiss. <sighs> and I, of course, had the worst first impression ever. Why the hell did I do that? I stifled my giggles. He was thinking of the kiss, too. It was adorable to hear him reminisce on sing. Remis ha, <laughs> great. A simple word like that and I can't even pr pronounce it. And mentally, slap and mentally slapping himself. Meh. I guess I can't take back the past. I can only make sure she gets what she deserves from now on. 
Huh? I didn't understand. He was- He already gave me everything I wanted. He was practically mine already. What more could he give me? Alright, Sam. No more fuck-ups. I'll call up James and learn how to be a proper man. I need to be strong enough to support her no matter what comes our way. Oh! Oh my! I couldn't- I cannot believe what I was hearing. Sam was willing to change for me? I felt both honored and guilty. I didn't want him to change. I loved him for him, no one else. I quickly went to the window and stepped up to grab the, roof, the rooftop. Thank God I had upper body strength. My, my son, my son, my suddenly, my suddenly, hand placements scared Sam. What? What the? Hello! Help me up, Sam. Sam looked down at me in surprise before grabbing my arms and lifting me up to the roof with him. However, I landed once again in his lap with his, with his arms around me. What the hell are you doing? And how long were you there? Long enough to hear everything, Sam. I don't want you to change. Sam stared, looking lost as to at what to say at my words as I caressed his cheek with a smile. It was true, though. He had fault, sure, but who didn't? I enjoyed his company and adored every part of his personality. Sam gently moved his hand head and buried his face in my palm, closing his eyes and absorbing what I had said. He gently opened his eyes partially, staring past my hand. You do realize that I'm a brute, right? That was my nickname in the Abyssal Plains. I'm a brute. A monster. I'm not what someone can really want. Sam. Sam finally looked at me, a look of hopelessness in his eyes. You're what I want. You're not a brute and you're not a monster. I gently guided Sam's face down with my hand and kissed him softly, reminding him of my touch and reaffirming my words. He stared at me as if his greatest wish had come true. I fought back a giggle at the sight. Sam gently pulled me to him, hugging me to his chest. I nuzzled into Sam's chest, hearing his gentle heartbeat beat and memorizing its tempo. You've chained the monster deep inside this sick and sinful body of mine. Oh, he's singing in the song! He's singing the opening song! He's seen the opening theme! You've turned the tables on me now You've trapped me in your cage somehow I can never escape from you But baby, that's alright You've chained the monster deep inside This sick and sinful body of mine But you better, re you better be ready when, I lay when you lay with me tonight Why am I messing up the song? And why am I even singing it in the first place? I should... I should just get on with the story. <laughs> you know the song? <laughs> Sam chuckled softly, the sound of his laughter saying happy waves down on my spine. Sam smiled down at me and kissed the top off of my head. It's your ringtone, doofus. I've practically memorized it. True, it's my ringtone. I smiled and giggled up at Sam. It was adorable to see him like this. I felt I then felt bold and straightened up to alert to tower Sam a little. Hey, what are you? Aww. I simply smiled before kissing Sam's forehead, then very gently over his eyelids. I love you, Sam. Sam held me and closed his eyes. I could tell he didn't want to let me go. I love you, too. I didn't want to wake up if this was indeed a dream. I felt light as a feather, not wanting to ever let go of this man in my arms. There were no words that could describe the emotions within me. I felt joy, happiness, ecstatic, high, all at once. Here I was, look, holding the man I would be, be with forever, under the beautiful orange sky on the roof of my mansion. I gained the heart of a demon. No, of a man I loved. I vowed to cherish him and love him for the remainder of my days and beyond. Could a demon love a human forever? I knew Sam would. And that was my happily ever after. And Sam's acceptance. New password unlocked, demon war, and... No. Alright, so that was Sam's route. Alright, now, see you after the credits! Alright, so... We got to hear... We got to hear Sam sing the opening theme a little bit. And then you got to hear me sing that very same song. Only I missed it the lyrics a little bit. Oh my gosh. So anyway. Now we only have one of the Incubi left and that is Matthew. 
but I think maybe, just maybe, I might go for someone else before I go for Matthew. Oh my god, that's sounding wrong. But, in any case, we've still got Sam's epilogue to play through, so be sure to tune in next time for that. So, thank you all for watching, be sure to leave a like, and see ya in the next one! Yep, see ya!